New York and on the new Hot 97 app. Ebro in the morning on Hot 97. Now we have Jamani Williams on the line. Jamani, are you there? I'm there. Peace and blessing. Peace to you, man. What up, Jamani? What's your official What's title up? in the city again? Public advocate. Public advocate. You are out and about not so much anymore, though, but are you going out and still talking to folks? I was out about two days ago, wanted to check the compliance of the so-called pause order, and it was scary, man. My brother's playing basketball. Uh, I saw a nice big wedding uh, happening uh, in the middle of the street. I saw people playing soccer. I saw a group of folks hanging out, two almost fighting. People riding in packs and bicycles. So I know a lot of New Yorkers are complying, but a lot of people are not. And it's scary because not only are they endangering themselves, they're endangering all the rest of us. Well, I mean, unfortunately, and I hate to have to say this on the radio in New York City, some people are going to have to learn the hard way. Mm. Uh, the, pro- the problem is some people learn the hard way means a lot more people learn the hard right. way. Right. You're right. It spreads. And I think one of the problems is, and there's been, um, you know, governor in particular, in comparison to all the other leadership in the nation, has been the best. There's just nowhere around it. And the things like testing, which is the one one of the two things that we have to be doing, um, we're actually not doing a, a bad job based on what we have. But where we have been lagging behind, either slow motion or no motion, is restricting movement and actually getting that message across. We took too long to close the schools. The governor was on 25%, 50%, 75% stay at home. Um, We still spent days trying to find the right name, the pause order. We needed to be in a lockdown for, uh, and we just took way too long to spread. So wait, I when you say we took days to find a name, am I to interpret that interpret that language as they didn't want to say the wrong thing as not to scare everyone? There seemed to be a one, uh, and this was said specifically, we don't want to scare people. And two, I guess maybe because De Blasio said it, he didn't want to use it. But the fact of the matter is. The data and the forecast of what would happen with this disease has been out there for a very long time. And you look at the numbers that were said, even by this governor, between 40% and 80% of New Yorkers, just want to break that down for a second. Eight, up to 80% of New Yorkers might get this. There's 9 million New York City residents alone. 40% is 3.6 million. 80% is 7.2 million. Mm. Most of them were self-resolved, thank God. But if you apply the mortality rates we've seen, 0.5% being some of the best, 3% being the worst. That is 18,000 to 216,000 deaths in New York City alone. You more than double that when you go to New York uh, State. And if we don't, we, we lost time that we can't make up. When they spent two days before people could go to the shelter in, in place, at that time, we lost 15 lives per hour. Now, per hour rate is even higher. And so I'm in pleading with everybody to just push a full lockdown. There's no reason that the parks are open. There's no reason people are going right. to construction jobs. Right, right, right. There's, no, there's no reason that we haven't let people out of Rikers and other correction facilities uh, that we should have. There's no reason that our homeless population, we just absolutely have no plan for them. Like, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. And everybody in this lockdown order should be mandated to stay home and the rest of the community and the community influencers need to be spreading that message. So I'm hoping that Hot 97, Ebro, all y'all, I hope we get some celebrities, some rappers, whatever, to be encouraging people to stay home because a lot of folks don't believe it can happen to them. And you try to explain it can. And even if it doesn't, you can take it home to your moms, to your pops, or you could touch your friend and your friend could take it home to their moms and their pops. Um, and half, over half of the cases are between people in 18 and 44 principal that died was 36. Right. Another black woman, 30, in, in a critical condition. She was a teacher. I'm really trying to instill, and I think one of the problems is people are not seeing the, they're not seeing it on TV. They're not seeing how bad it could really get. People, well, day, just another day in New York City, and it's really not. Go ahead, so, Rosenberg. So, Jamani, you, you mentioned the parks, and specifically this past weekend, I went out to Riverside Park, and I know at the time they're like, oh, you know, you should go out and get exercise, and you can take your kids out. But, Jamani, the truth is I took my dog for a walk along Riverside Drive. The park was crowded like it was a spring day, and people were just still hanging out. Is that why we need to close the parks so people know that you take your dog out and you go back inside? You don't just post up all day? Absolutely. That's that's facts. I mean, 
people respond to the leadership and message. When when people when the, when the message is wishy washy, you got people saying, "Oh, maybe we can just have four kids at a time." Who's going to regulate that? The, the, we heard them say literally, you know, the, the the stuff in the parks are not sanitized. We don't sanitize the equipment. So parents, you're going to have to make decisions whether you want your child on there or not. What are you talking about? Crazy. Man? Like that doesn't even make any sense. Now they're taking hoops, of course. First of all, that's focused in one community alone. I don't know why you're doing that. Uh, second of all, they're going to make a decision on Saturday. That's two days, three days of more lives. Then I hear on the state they're calling it now a mandatory playground social distancing. Dude, it is. What, a, is, what is that? What is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the same when I by the west side. All by the water. It was so packed over the weekend. I saw videos of people putting people on blast. People are just not listening. They are not listening. Well, and that's why I just said a second ago, you know, we go, let me say it this way. We going to learn the hard way. Because yeah. this weekend, and I said this earlier on the program, this is going to, y'all think last weekend was tough. The numbers you're going to see this weekend, people ain't it's never bad. seen nothing like this before. And, and and that's why I said we going to have to learn the hard way, Jumani, and anybody that can hear my voice, is because we'll the numbers are going to skyrocket this weekend yes. and next week. And, and I'm not talking not- about the number of cases. I'm talking yeah, yeah. about death in this city. Yeah. Death. The numbers we're hearing now are from actions and decisions people made seven, eight days ago. So we're about seven, eight days from what's happening and decisions we make. So you are correct. All these people going outside, all these folks, it's going to start. The numbers are going to spike. They're just going to. And we know it. It was forecasted. It was anticipated. And we should have let New Yorkers understand the gravity of the situation. And I, the I'd love message. to take it a step deeper, too, while I have you. You know, part of um, part of the American marketing machine is to make all of us feel like everything is OK. That is in how we respond to everything, right? Which is based on, you know, a society built on, you know, uh, freedoms, possibility, and hope. And we all need to have it. But even the president talking about Easter, which makes no sense, is still a part of that same kind of um, muscle memory that we have as a nation and a culture where we want to go put a, a, a light at the end of the tunnel, provide hope. I, and, I, and I understand why it's there, because they don't want people to feel like it's doomsday and just start going crazy, harming each other, harming themselves. I get what it's based on. But unfortunately, and this is why I said we're going to have to learn the hard way, the numbers we are going to see are going to be astounding. People are it, not you know, mental. People are not mentally and emotionally prepared, and we talked about this earlier. To see Jacob Javits filled with patients yeah. in yeah. Elm in Hel- Elmhurst, Queens, at that hospital, they had so many deaths they had to bring in an outside freezer because the oh, bodies they're, was. They're moving people. They're moving patients in Elmhurst to other hospitals now. They're already over capacity. Mm. And so this Friday was supposed to be the day where ICU and beds were full at all the hospitals, which is why they set up Jacob Javits. Jamani, would you happen? I was looking. I couldn't. They had announced that they were going to have a, a location in Westchester. I think it was another location in Brooklyn, which were these Army Corps of Engineer hosp- emergency hospitals. Um, did did that decision get made? I couldn't find it other than the Jacob Javits. Uh, they have a couple of places. I don't have the, the list right now, but they do have a couple of places, particularly by region. Remember, this is going on across the state um, that they're trying to get these Army Corps of Engineers to come in. Again, our president, well, y'all president, took way too long to even make those decisions. We just got to ignore him because this buffoonish leadership is coming out. Well, they, about they've uh, see, I saw a report. I don't know if it's true or false, but they said CNN and NBC are going to stop covering his his uh, daily press conference because it's riddled with too many falsehoods and lies. And so it's they can't normal. even they can't even turn to the leadership. Yo, that's where it's at right now. Yeah. Yep. It's 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 scary, but the, the the hope I see is that New Yorkers, we the difference between the best case scenario and the worst case scenario is us. We actually have a lot of power in changing those scenarios. 
And that's, and that's why, why staying I, staying away from each other and staying in the crib. Yeah. And I understand, yo, it's, it's difficult to, to stay home with your family for uh, for two weeks, three weeks, except for mine, because my, my fiance and my stepdaughter are listening right now. But, you know, it's a <laughs> nice cleanup. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's difficult. And there's some, you know, some mental health conditions that we have to think about and put an infrastructure for telehealth and telemental health uh, communication. Uh, but with that said, this is what we have to do. And if you tell people, oh, you can't go out, they're going to go out. Tell people it's a lockdown. It's a mandated lockdown. Then you go out and get your ass back home if you take a walk to walk around a dog. Just well, go I, on your and can, Well, can I, and I, can I take it a step further, which I, I truly believe this is also part of the hesitation. If they say it's against the law to go outside, they have currently no way to enforce that law other than fines. Because it's not so, like they can just keep locking people up because they don't want people to have the virus to be locked so up. Let me address that, right? Because that's a, a critical point. One, messaging is important. So when you tell people it's mandated lockdown, they have a different sense of what actually is going on. When you tell people they don't have to, then they feel a little bit safer, much safer than they should be. And if you call it what it is. And two, this is not about law enforcement. Uh, this is not about enforcement. It's about trying to get some compliance. So it's not about punishment. It's about protection. Fines, arrests won't do this. And so when you have the lockdown, the mandated lockdown, everybody now has to become a messenger, whether it's uh, the sanitation workers who can put messages on their trucks, whether it's uh, law enforcement who can continue to explain people what's happening and why, whether we have messages in the grocery store, whether our cure violence and our crisis management, uh, our faith leaders, uh, Ebro in the morning, Hot 97, everybody now can push that message out. And pushing that message out, I believe, will change behavior. Um, um, I, I, hope I hope so. so. I hope you're right. But, you know, I, I'm, I also um, am concerned that, you know, just people don't listen. And I don't really know if we have a response to the ignorance levels that we're seeing in our city and that we, we knew were already there. But, you know, you got people still lining up at the chicken spot. Yeah. I'm not sure. When I spoke to those brothers, I was keeping my distance on the basketball court. Mm -hmm. They really didn't have this information. They heard it. But oh, it was just really a flu. Nobody, everybody can't get it. Um, I actually spoke to some people who didn't have homes, said we don't have homes. We're not getting information. Some had homes. They had no TV. And so the little clips that they're getting, if they're getting it somewhere, are filled with, it's okay to go to the park. Or it's bad, but it's not that bad. That's why the consistent messaging coming from everybody, I think will begin to change that. Well, let's, um, let's start it right now. If you don't feel like it's out there, it's that bad. Yeah. Stay home. You have Just stay home. Just to stay home. Go ahead, Sean. On that same tip, too, what do you do if uh, you have young children? Because the message has also been to, to, you know, let your kids go outside, get some air for a little while. Like, what do you do in that space? So the thing is this. We have to say this is a mandated lockdown. As was mentioned, everybody's not going to listen at all times. Um, so we know people are going to step outside. But if you say it's a mandatory lockdown and explain why, if you live in Crowd Heights, it's less likely you're going to go downtown Brooklyn, take a walk. You walk around the block, and get your behind home. Or you got to go to that specialty place to get this food, you go to the, cor the, the, the corner grocery, wherever's closest, and then go home. Or we figure out a schedule where people can actually do that. The, the, the thing is now people have a lot more flexibility than they have, than they actually have. And we don't have people, all of us, organizing, sending the same message. So people are confused about what that message is and what their risk level. And they don't understand that it's not just them. It is anybody else they come into contact with and who they come into contact with. So we have to do a better job of getting that message out. And we are weeks behind when it comes to that. Yeah, I know in Jersey, they the, the governor just mandated that they shut down all child care facilities. They just mm -hmm. did that in Jersey. Mm -hmm. And it's all unless you are one of the facilities providing child care to essential employees. Oh, okay, okay, because that was my next question. Too. Right, so police officers, fire department, medical hair care professionals, if, you know, the child care place for those individuals, they're saying those can operate. Yeah. Everything that, else I mean, is shut down. That makes sense. That makes sense. And we have a duty, a moral obligation to protect those essential workers out there, nurses, doctors, firefighters, uh, postal workers, uh, MTA, 
uh, our police, our people serving food to our children. We have a, a moral obligation to protect them. We, and we're not. It, I, this is, it is remarkable what I see happening from leadership. In some aspects, I'm seeing some great leadership in terms of uh, trying to get information out on a regular basis in the absence of leadership across this nation. The governor is doing that. And then just huge gaps in being afraid to restrict movement, which is one of the things we have the most control over and actually can help arrest this in the best way. You look at the mayor of LA and the language he's using, telling people they have to prepare for things that they've never seen before. They may be on lockdown for months. You look at that language, then you look at the language coming out of New York City and New York State, where we have two thirds of the cases, where we're the epicenter, where yeah. we have 22 times more cases. And it's just remarkable what that, what that language is like and the ease that it puts on people so that they don't have that sense of urgency. And yes, we're happy that 80% of folks will self-resolve, but that 20% is a large number. And it's not just our seniors, it's other people as well. Jamani Williams, public advocate. Thank you for your time today. Thanks, we'll Jamani. back with you next week, brother. Thank you, Thank you for your time. The language is serious. Uh, the situation is serious. Um, as we've been reporting to you guys, New York, as of this morning, is over 33,000 cases and 366 deaths in the state of New York. Uh, the city, uh, percentage-wise, is worse than that. And, right. and as the numbers roll in, um, Jumani, do you know how many uh, deaths we've had in New York City? Because I think, look, I've even hesitated to report on death every morning. But as we just talked about the seriousness of the issue, maybe people need to hear how many people are dying. So we're just about over uh, with everybody, to, uh, probably about 1% or so. Um, and it's, but that's going to keep growing. Right. And so the more we get the bigger masses, the more we're not making these changes, that's going to keep growing. And once we get to three percent over 12 months, we're talking about two hundred and sixteen thousand New Yorkers alone. That's just in New York City. We can't even fathom that that kind of death, which is why mm -hmm. people need to respond today to deal with what's going to come down the next. And look, we can do this lockdown two weeks and reassess. Right, but we have to do something. There is a cost, a human cost to an action, and a human cost to slow action. And and it would be so much better to lock down and then decide earlier we don't need to be locked down as opposed to going backwards. You can't it, go back. You can't That's if you don't There's do no it. But well, it, it, people fact. will just die, and then you can't go back. Yes, that's a fact. And I was on a press conference with a, a epidemiologist. CNN contributor, physician, saying the same thing and breaking it down, letting people understand how this virus works. Uh, and y'all know me, I'm not usually on this curtail civil liberties and all that. I'm, I'm, I'm the opposite. But I know where we're at, and I'm seeing the figures and the, and the stats that many New Yorkers are not seeing. And I know the, there's only a few things we can do to deal with this. And everywhere else around the world that tried these measures, finally did the lockdown. The number one thing they say is we wish we had acted sooner. And I don't know why the leaders here want to relearn a lesson that we've already learned from other places. It's facts. Jamani Williams, um, y'all keep it locked, man. It's Hot 97 Cast One. Run a tune real quick. We got to make a transition. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank the numbers you. are real. The numbers are very real.